Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the arrival of the official party. Please remain standing for the national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant Holly Short, Chaplain Corps, United States Navy. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Yeah. Midshipman candidates, be seated. The officer in charge of the 4th Class Regiment, Lieutenant Colonel Todd McCarthy, United States Marine Corps. Ladies and gentlemen, 
It is my distinct honor to introduce the 63rd Superintendent of the United States Naval Academy, Vice Admiral Sean Buck, United States Navy. Class of 25, family and friends, it is great to see all of you all in person. I know some of you have been here for a couple of days, but it's a pleasure to welcome you to the Naval Academy and our Naval Academy family officially this evening. Class of 25, this oath ceremony marks the start of your incredible journey here in Annapolis. And although this might be the official start of your Naval Academy journey, over the last 16 months of the COVID pandemic, whether you were in high school, prep school, college, or possibly the fleet, you have undoubtedly already forged one of the qualities that will make you a world-class leader four years from now, the ability to adapt and overcome. Nothing, nothing about the last year has been easy for any of you, but each of you continued to excel and earned your appointment above thousands of other applicants to the Naval Academy. 25, congratulations. We're very proud of you. One of the first passages that your detailers will expect you to know by heart is the Naval Academy mission statement. No doubt some of you all have already begun committing this to memory. As you will learn, everything we do at this institution is a reflection of our mission to develop you mentally, morally, and physically, and imbue you with the highest ideals of duty, honor, and loyalty. Every step you take from this point forward in Annapolis will bring you closer to fulfilling that mission as an officer in the Navy or the Marine Corps. Soon, you will raise your right hand and take the midshipman oath of office. I believe it is important for each of you to understand the history that's embedded in that oath of office and to internalize the meaning behind your commitment. Military oaths date back to the days of ancient Rome when soldiers would swear an oath of allegiance to their individual commanders before each campaign. And that idea of pledging oneself to a general, a king, or an emperor would be the backbone of militaries for centuries thereafter. The founding fathers of our great nation revolutionized this oath, refusing to pledge fealty to any one man. And in the throes of war with England, these visionaries instituted the very first rendition of our officer oath, requiring all prospective officers to name the 13 states swear them to be free, independent, and sovereign states, and declare no allegiance to George III, the King of Great Britain. Following the Revolutionary War, our founders changed the oath once more, taking a groundbreaking leap by requiring all officers to swear their allegiance to the fledgling Constitution rather than a leader. And while this oath would change slightly over the years, the oath which you are about to recite has remained much unchanged since 1884. These words will bind each of you together in support of an idea, a notion of liberty and democracy so strong that it is greater than any one man or woman. Each of you comes to the Naval Academy with your own unique life story, culture, and belief system. You represent all 50 states, our territories, and 13 different nations. The oath you will take today transcends these differences between you. As you recite the oath, appreciate the significance of each and every word. And when you find yourself struggling throughout the summer, and trust me, you're supposed to struggle, I want you to look to your left and then look to your right and know that you are surrounded by brothers and sisters who have sworn to watch your back through thick and thin by raising their right hands alongside you tonight. Now, 
As you prepare to embark on this journey from plebe to midshipman to officer, I want to share with you the story of Admiral David Farragut, a man who recited this oath in 1810 at the ripe age of nine years old and whose accomplishments and service to his country would make him one of the greatest heroes in our naval history. Upon the outbreak of the Civil War, Farragut was assigned to command the Union's blockading squadron in the western Gulf of Mexico with orders to enter the Mississippi River and capture New Orleans. Initially, in concert with recommendations from his superiors at the Department of War, Farragut decided to take the conservative approach, and he planned a five-day mortar barrage of the Confederate forts guarding the path to New Orleans. With a tremendous understanding of the battle space, Farragut recognized a flaw in the drawn-out attack and decided to carry out a bolder plan. His naval force would sprint past the first two forts in the early hours of the morning with guns blazing. Sure enough, Farragut's daring plan proved successful and his ships would go on to destroy the Confederate gunboats upstream, land Union troops on the banks, and triumph in the city of New Orleans. Fresh off of his success in Louisiana, Farragut turned his attention to Mobile Bay, Alabama, which was heavily defended by several Confederate forts, the largest being Fort Morgan, where a line of mines, which were known as torpedoes at the time, lay on one side of the bay's channel. Farragut's 14 ships entered the bay in two columns, and the lead armored ship, the USS Tecumseh, was demolished by a mine soon after entering the channel. The rest of the vessel, vessels immediately slowed, causing mass confusion under the guns of Fort Morgan. David Farragut, recognizing the peril, shouted his famous order, Damn the torpedoes! Full speed ahead! From the very top of his ship's rigging, where he was lashed to the mast for support, Farragut led his own ship, the USS Hartford, into the mines, and when they failed to explode, the rest of his ships followed. Farragut's naval forces soon captured the remaining ports in the region and landed a devastating blow that would help turn the war effort in favor of the Union. So, as we sit here today and you prepare to take this oath to serve your country and uphold the promise of liberty for all, I want you to remember David Farragut and remember his commitment to fulfill that promise and hold his nation together. When his resolve was tested, Farragut held fast to his beliefs and adapted to the challenging circumstances. 25, you are entering an institution and a profession with a history and a legacy unlike any other. And when you doubt yourself this summer, remember that you have pledged yourself to defending an idea bigger than any one man or woman, and use that knowledge to pick yourself up and get back in the fight right away. If not for yourself, for the men and women standing next to you who took the oath collectively together this evening. And for our detailers, this summer represents the greatest leadership opportunity that you will experience during your four years in Annapolis. Just like Farragut, you're going to face challenges, and your leadership will be tested. Your success will be measured by your ability to adapt creatively to the circumstances, to work constructively with your peers, and lead your plebes with compassion and inspiration when they're faced with adversity. Remember, the class, the success of 25 as a class will forever be a reflection of your leadership this summer. So to the classes of 22, 23, and 24, as you rise to meet this challenge, I order you, damn the torpedoes! Oh, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now my honor and privilege to introduce our 89th Commandant of Midshipmen, Colonel J.P. McDonough, who will administer the oath of office to your sons and daughters. Lower your hands.
Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of blue and gold. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the departure of the official party. formation is at 2015 at your designated formation areas. Midshipmen desiring to meet with guests may do so along Stripling Walk immediately to the rear. Meet by the signs that correspond to the first letter of your last name. Unaccompanied midshipmen may meet with the Naval Academy supporters in the center of Stripling Walk. Any midshipmen and their family desiring a personal swearing-in ceremony, please report to the rotunda in Bancroft Hall. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the ceremony. Recent statistics are available on the web page uh, for the United States Naval Academy. Uh, there were 16,000 roughly applicants for the class of 2024. And of those, uh, 1,400 were admitted and uh, 1,100 accepted. So it's a pretty small number. And from that, uh, there's a mixture of both men and women. So uh, I think it was about 899 and the rest were women. So it's even a smaller number from that 16,000 that are admitted to the United States Naval Academy. And also, you have to not only be admitted academically, you have to get a congressional, you have to be sponsored by your congressman or your senator, um, and, and of course, pass all the, the medical examinations, which is no, which is no yeah, but it's, it's no easy road either. Um, I happen to know two other kids that are uh, applying to your class that might not get in because of that. Um, so if you could just tell me, give me a thumbs up when we start to so, uh, Okay, so, and you'll be able to prop it. Shall we start the bucket three, two, one, so that he knows? Okay, sure. Yeah. Okay, sir. Um, you ready? Three, two, one. All right, good afternoon. My name is Commodore Sam DeCastro of Military Seal of Command Far East here in Semalong. We're here to uh, present Shaquille's admissions letter to the United States Naval Academy for the class of 2025. So I'll read part of the letter received from the Superintendent of the United States Naval Academy. As Superintendent of the United States Naval Academy, I extend to you my sincere congratulations upon your selection as prospective midshipman 
and the United States Navy. I'm pleased to offer you an appointment to the United States Naval Academy as a member of the class of 2025. You should take pride in having successfully completed with outstanding young people from across the nation for admission to this historic institution. Acceptance of this appointment will be your first step on a challenging voyage of discovery that will afford you a world-class four-year degree and commission as an officer and leader in the United States Navy or Marine Corps. Congratulations, sir. Thank you, sir. Welcome to the United States Navy.